Hello flight simmers and aviation enthusiasts. Now if you've been around the flight simulation community for more than two minutes, you've probably heard about the legendary London Gatwick scenery. What makes it good? The level of detail and aesthetic eye candy you receive for a low price of zero dollars. But as with everything else in life, there is a catch. The word around is this scenery is labor intensive. It's caused multiple crash to desktops, even on some live streams I've seen. I'm about to put it to the test in terms of measuring the frames per second. How it will ultimately perform on your system is to be found out. Now what you need to know is there are two versions of this scenery offered for free on flightsim.to. There's a standard and ultra. The standard version omits some additional animation like the monorail and other ground equipment that saves on frames per second. We'll be testing both versions. But first, here's how you download the scenery. Be advised, both versions are over one gigabyte, so make sure you have sufficient space on your hard drive. Now just a quick note before we get started, if you want to switch back and forth between the two different versions of the scenery available, make sure, for example, if you have the standard full and you want to install the ultra version, that after you delete the standard full version, make sure you go into the sim, load it with the default Gatwick scenery, uh, anywhere on the airport is okay, load with your aircraft and then delete the rolling cache in your settings under data and then proceed to install the ultra version if you don't do that it, it notes in the flight sim uh, website flightsim.to that you might encounter some uh, errors now let's set a baseline frames per second for the default scenery in microsoft flight simulator to make this an apples to apples comparison live weather and traffic will be set to off in all scenarios Now to set the baseline FPS for the default scenery, as you can see here, I would call it about an average of 40 to 45 FPS. And moving on now to the standard full version of the Gatwick scenery, I would call it about 35 to 40 frames per second on average. And that means we're losing about five FPS as compared to the default scenery. Not a significant amount, but Definitely enough to get your attention in terms of uh, a noticeable degradation in performance. And last but not least, moving on to the ultra version of the Gatwick scenery. This one was a little surprising as uh, off the bat, I expected around a five FPS loss, similar to how we had from the default to the standard, but it seemed to hold up pretty well uh, in the range of 35 to 40 with the exception of some random sort of detailed locations where we have a lot of uh, graphics going on and animation. I saw some losses uh, in, with frames per second resulting in the high 20s to, to low 30s. So here's my takeaway from this test. The scenery itself is definitely worth an install, considering it's free. The FPS loss between the standard and ultra versions appears negligible. Ultimately, the issue with the scenery seems to be random crash to desktops, so until you try on your own system, it's all guesswork. But in terms of choppiness, it's a non-issue. Keep in mind turning on live weather may affect this, particularly on a hazy day. But if you have a mid to high range PC, Go ahead and give this ultra version a try and let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and the channel is subscribed. Take care guys.